Hi there. So, my name is Kelly King. You should be watching this on twitch.tv slash imagination is God, or maybe on the YouTube channel if it's been posted uh, there after a couple months after the um, the VOD expires. I'll put, them, I'll put them up there. I also run a website called uh, masterofimagination.com. Unless you're watching this a little bit into the future, there's not much there right now. Just two articles. Um, I plan to add more and I plan to really flesh out the, especially the techniques section on the site. Um, and I'll also be adding um, some more to the questions page. Because uh, basically I've been compiling a list of common questions people have and the common answers with sites to, especially where when Neville answered it. Um, but for the most part... The thing I want to emphasize with questions, because hopefully, you know, people will come into this and not, either not know anything about it, or they'll know a lot, but they'll still have questions. And for the most part, I want people to be to direct themselves back internally, because you've already got the answer to it. You're just not asking in the right way. You're just focused on the question, the question, the question and not opening yourself up to the answer. So, going, I mean, we'll see how that evolves because people might come in with really interesting questions where I hadn't thought of that before. It'll be a fun thing to talk about for a little bit. Uh, so, since this is the first stream, I'm going to talk a little bit of like about what I would like to do with this stream, kind of what the goals are for it, uh, who the intended audience is, um, and then how it would, I mean, just generally, what is this supposed to be, okay? Uh, so, for the most part, this is a way to talk about um, the teachings of one person, Neville Goddard, but there's some other people we'll explore on the channel, like Reverend Ike Legacy, um, Walter Lanyon, Joseph Murphy, uh, because essentially, it's all about... Um, two things the law and the promise the law is as a man thinking of in his, in his heart so is he and the promise is that one day you'll remember for a fact that you are god the father you just forgot and then you're going to remember and this is what neville spent his whole career talking about it's always the same message it's always the same thing so it does get repetitive and boring but you need to hear it a lot of times because you're not experiencing creation as the creator right now. You're experiencing it from the perspective of the creation. So you're biased to that. You're biased to thinking you don't, you're not empowered, um, that you don't have any control or say, that random things can just happen to you. But you forgot that you were the creator and you merged with your creation. And so the journey you're specifically on is all about remembering that and waking up to that and learning how to reapply that in your life and it's one of those things where admittedly when you first hear it you think it is madness you think it's stupid because it's totally different to everything you ever thought about your life and so that kind of moves me to what my real goal is which is i want to meet people who are already applying the law in their life who know that neville was telling the truth who understand what Neville is, too. It's just a reminder you left yourself. Um, and who are able to approach life with this new perspective because, I don't know, just as you keep going, as it, well as I kept going, it's just, it gets a little frustrating uh, hearing the way people still think about reality. Um I mean, I don't want—I don't want to hyper rant right off the bat. <laughs> I kind of want to stay focused on talking about what this channel is about. But to give a quick example, people like really talking badly about the whole year 2020, that it was an awful year. It's like, well, the more you talk about that, <laughs> the more you're going to experience that, right? So maybe a little bit better focus in your thoughts and in your words would help you out there. Um, so yeah, to have a space where I could connect with other people like that, uh, hello, Rezu, <laughs> I don't know if that was, because I only told a couple people, so I don't know who that might be, if it's someone I know or not, if someone just happened in, 
Uh, but so, in terms of the audience for this, people who know who know about the law who are already applying it, and then people who might be like Rezu, I don't know, who just find the channel and have never heard of this, have no idea about it. Like it would be cool if people are playing a game, and then they that channel raids here, and they find this, and open their mind up to it and find that it's true. And, you know, it could possibly change. It will change your life if they apply it. If you apply it, it'll change your life. And related to that, I'm not here to, like, convince you of anything. I'm just here that if you're at the point in your life where you're ready for the reminder, it might come through me. But it could come through so many different sources. And once you start waking up, you're going to look back and see that it was trying to come to you through innumerable sources your whole life. It's just, is this the one that clicked? And for me, the one that clicked was Neville. And, I mean, I'm just so, uh, you know, enwrapped and inspired by all of his work because, I mean, he's just one of the most eloquent speakers, orators, writers I've ever come across. Now, granted, <laughs> Neville was smart enough to know his limit in terms of writing ability. So, um, he, most of his work is just sites of other people like William Blake and D.H. Lawrence, Lawrence and the Bible itself. Uh, you're new, you're wondering if you're able to hear your thoughts about beliefs about spirituality. That's great. Uh, I'm, I mean, that's what this, is, this channel is about. Um, so today, we're going to be uh, narrating uh, a section of Awakened Imagination called The Coin of Heaven. Um, I think my format for this going ahead, and this is all going to change it as more people come in and join and we see what the channel can be. Um, the format would basically be in the beginning have a just chatting where people can just talk, we can just hang out. Um, it doesn't have to be anything serious. Uh, if people in the channel have had some fun manifestations they want to bring up or if they tried like last week's exercise because I want to do integrate some exercises into this, some little things people can have fun with throughout the week. They can let us know what they've experienced as a result. Um, and then after just chatting, I'd probably have a lecture every day that we're going to go over or a section of a book or, you know, some, some, some media to reference, um, that we'll get into and we'll get into that in a little bit, uh, take a break. Um, and probably during the break, I'll have some other, um, some other things community created, like, um, eventually I want to set up a way for people to, to uh, just leave voice messages, leave voice notes about things. Um, we could get into more of um, people's experiences with the different uh, exercises and stuff like that. Uh, whatever that little break time is, is pretty open. Uh, I'd also like to try, uh, there are some games you could play on streams that allow the audience to participate. And so far, what I've been thinking about is doing marbles on stream, but <clears throat> most people, when you're playing marbles, it's just random um who who would um you just when you're normally playing marbles you're like well this is random we don't know who's gonna win let's see who wins but a fun way to do it would be okay we're gonna play marbles let's this let's pick this one person in chat they're going to win and now let's all decide that and however you want to manifest that do it and let's see if we do it collectively um, fun ways to approach those different little games uh, like that. Um, so that would be the middle segment. After that middle segment, move back into whatever the topic is of the whatever lecture I'm doing that day, finish that up, uh, and then end uh, with that week's uh, suggested exercise. Um, and then, you know, I want to do alternative ones too, where ones where I'm doing interviews with people. Um, and I really, I want to interview just kind of it doesn't have to be anybody special it can just be you know special from the old man perspective special just typical people who are having experiences um that reflect what neville's talking about and people who you know they're they're just creative people who use their imagination but they never thought about the spiritual aspect of it um and then i'm going to do some games i've already got figment on the uh on the list of games I want to do that is definitely highly, highly um, imagination-oriented. 
I mean, in Figment, you play the imagination, and you're restoring the mind through imagination. That's literally the game. Uh, and there's also a segment from another game I've been playing, We Happy Few, that's pretty funny, and it's directly about uh, Neville's kind of topics. Um, so, yeah, so games, interviews. Um, I think those, those are mostly the kind of videos I, that we'll be doing here. Um, but the main thing is I want to inject some levity into the space. Like, I have no ambition to coach like I'm not selling you anything it would be cool I'd really like this channel to get partnered and I would like to have this as its own self-sustaining uh, hobby um, or, or as as like a side business but it, it, the point is it's a stream and it's a stream that is from the perspective of knowing that you're creating all of it of knowing that everybody is you of knowing uh, that you have infinite absolute dominion over your reality so to sort of tie in how this would go at this point people would be chatting so people like Rezu would ask the things they're going to ask and yeah I would talk to you about yeah I'm down to whatever you want to say Rezu I'm down to read it because right now I finished my spiel <laughs> and I'm not quite quite ready to go into narration yet so yeah whatever you want to uh, know about or talk about I'm willing to engage it I'm telling you, though, if you're my first troll, that'll be fun. How to deal with that. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about this stream going ahead. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, and when it comes to personal success stories, I don't know how much I'm going to share. Uh, just because that's a thing that I haven't found, like, completely how I feel about it, you know. It's more like some things I will definitely talk about. Other things, they're really... There's something I wouldn't even talk to about. Uh, I wouldn't talk with friends about. So I'm not necessarily going to share them here. Um, Idiot's Guide to Neville. Well, you know, Campbell... Are you asking me to give you one right now or if that is what's going on here? I mean, Neville in short is very simple. You are God, and the way you exp the way you use God power is imagination. Uh, whenever you are using your imagination, that's literally the um, the omnipotence and the omniscience of God. So you can't you think of it this way: like if you are in a reality controlling a reality, is it going to look like a flip book of options because it's an infinite reality so the way you can sift and sort through things in your mind is the way you navigate all of those possibilities now that said i do think there are some sort of like self-imposed safety limits on this reality uh like you can't you wouldn't necessarily be able to experience real vampires or real monsters uh, because we do put some sort of like limits, but you can still thoroughly explore them through things like making movies about them or writing books about them. So I do think there are some like safety limits, uh, like a lot of fantastical creatures are the safety limits. Um, interestingly enough, time manipulation is not one of the safety limits, though in terms of how extreme you can make it, I'm not sure. I haven't started pushing that yet. Like, I have not tried to, like, wake up 200 years into the future. But one thing that pretty much everybody has experienced and is very easy is time moving more slowly or more quickly. And it usually happens without you intending it to happen. And anybody who knows anything about a flow state very much knows that that's quite possible. Um, and then one thing that Neville talks about a lot is, like, um, when it comes to the past... If you're animating it in your mind, it's not the past, it's now. I mean, it, it's all you animating that state, animating that reality. Um, and sort of the danger there is if it's something negative that happened to you, something traumatic, and you keep replaying it, you'll keep recreating it in other ways in your life. But that's a whole, <laughs> that's kind of a whole big subtopic there, which people who know 
who've already been trying this, uh, who've already been reading Neville and practicing what he talks about, uh, know quite a lot about revision. Um, but Rezu, you're free to ask me anytime you want, uh, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, right now, I think we're going to get into uh, today's um, reading, which is a, a chapter of the Coin of Heaven. I picked this one specifically because I think the first few streams are going to be what a lot of uh, law of assumption, law of attraction, Neville people know as mental diet, um, which is simply organizing your day-to-day -day thoughts, being careful about what you're thinking in your everyday life. Um, basically, a lot of the techniques, the technique aspect of this is, you know, Neville gave two suggestions, really, um, which is to get really relaxed and visualize or to think your think think thoughts from the state of already having what you want. So to give an example there, uh, if it was money, um, you would you would create a scene where you're you've literally deposited the money in the bank and you're looking at uh, a bank receipts for the amount of money that's been deposited. Um, you would visualize that, and then the mental diet aspect of that would be like. Isn't it great that I uh, got that money? I put it in the bank. I have it now. Let's say you wanted five thousand dollars. Yeah, I got the five grand. I can spend it right now. I got that five grand. If it say if it was from a specific person, uh, you know, Bobby finally paid me the five grand he owes me. <laughs> it's in the bank. Finally got that money from him. Checked in, bounce, got the money. Um, and you're saying that and thinking that, even though today Bobby told you. Uh, man, I don't have the money. I don't know where I'm, where I'm going to get it or when I'm going to get it. You would have that conversation, walk away from it and be like, yeah, I got that five grand. Bobby finally gave me five grand. That's the central premise. Um, that's the mental, that latter part of it is the mental diet. Uh, and that is what the coin of heaven is about. Because um, I think there's a little bit of a disconnect where people are, they're visualizing and then they're spending all the rest of their time thinking about not having it, noticing they don't have it, and all their thoughts are focused on that. And so that's where there could be this really split mind, and it gets really frustrating, um, especially when it's something you really want, because you're really focused on not having it, and all your thoughts are focused on not having it. And so that the coin of heaven is, is really about that. Beyond that, there's a couple other mental diet lectures that are really good order your conversations are right can't remember the other two hours off the top of my head <laughs> and i don't know if i'll do all three of them probably will at some point because if, if pretty soon after that i'm going to want to get into um the five lessons and um, maybe some of the other shorter books like feeling is the secret is super short i could do that in two streams um and a feeling is the secret is honestly one of those books where you just read that. It's like 40 pages, and that's everything right there. So these first couple of streams, I want to focus on where are the areas where everything you really need to know is condensed in one thing. And the coin of heaven is definitely one of those. So let's get into it. Because I had some trouble with the stream set up today, you will see a glimpse right now of Streamlabs as I move into the browser. bad this right, I'm just making sure that it ref okay it does reflect on uh, over there all right so the coin of heaven this is from uh, the book awakened imagination I don't remember off the top of my head uh, what year I can check see what year this book was written this is the big for anybody who doesn't know this is the compilation of most of the books I think one book is missing out of this version um, I might have Coin of Heaven selected already. Yeah, I do. This was one of the later books. I knew that. Let's see if it has the year at the beginning. Nineteen fifty-four. Neville died in seventy-three, seventy-one, seventy-two, or seventy-three. Uh, his first book was 39, I think. 
And before that, he'd been doing uh, pamphlets. It's weird. They don't have a they don't have a date in here on your faith is your fortune. Oh, 41. Okay, I thought it was 39. I know before that he'd been doing the pamphlets. Um, I, I'm, actually, let me read from the book because I've got the book right here. Might as well. I had it open to the coin of heaven. Does a firm persuasion that a thing is so make it so? And the prophet replied, All poets believe that it does. And in ages of imagination, this firm persuasion removed the mountains. But many are not capable of a firm persuasion of anything. <laughs> I, I honestly, you think about that quote, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Um, persuasion is an inner effort of intense attention. To listen attentively as though you heard is to evoke, to activate. By listening, you can hear what you want to hear and persuade those beyond the range of the outer ear. Speak it, in, speak it inwardly in your imagination only. Make your inner conversation match your fulfilled desire. What you desire to hear without, you must hear within. Embrace the without within and become one who hears only that which implies fulfillment of his desire. And all the external happenings in the world will become a bridge leading to the objective realization of your desire. Your inner speech is perpetually written all around you in happenings. Learn to relate these happenings to your inner speech and you will become self-taught. By inner speech is meant those mental conversations which you carry on within yourself. They may be inaudible when you are awake because of the noise and distractions of the outer world of becoming, but they are quite audible in deep meditation and dream. But whether they be audible or inaudible, you are their author and fashion your world in their likeness. I just scoot it down a little bit. There is a God in heaven, and heaven is within you, that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar, which shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Inner speech from premises of fulfilled desire is the way to create an intelligible world for yourself. Observe your inner speech, for it is the cause of future action. Inner speech reveals a state of consciousness from which you view the world. Make your inner speech match your fulfilled desire, for your inner speech is manifested all around you in happenings. Um, so, Kim, well, it's kind of interesting. If you're still listening and still here, it's interesting and actually a little bit intimidating that you're tuning into this. Because, um, I don't know, it, some of them might stop by later, but I have some internet friends who we've all been actively manifesting a lot of things. And they're all at the point where they know this is all true. So it's almost like boring. It's like, it's always, it, Neville is so eloquent that it's always fun to reread what he's saying and like remember it and really feel into it harder. But when you don't, know or believe any of this or or just think it's madness <laughs> as i did at the beginning because you haven't tested it yet it's it's intimidating to talk to someone like that especially someone you care about because it's like there is a degree of fear of judgment about it but at the same time i'm at the point where i've done enough that i know it's true and has started having crazy dreams and all kinds of stuff um I mean, I've never had a, I never had never had a vision before until I started reading these books. I had a vision, and then realized that Neville had had the same vision, and I read it in the book and forgot. And then when I read it again, I was like, "Oh shit, that's what happened to me." <laughs> uh, so I know he's telling the truth, um, but it's interesting to talk to you because, as far as I know, you have no acquaintance with any of this. Uh, so you're good, <laughs> you're good uh, test audience, <laughs> because I think in the future, my well, my hope, what I will manifest is in the future, you know, people will join this channel who have no idea, they were just playing, you know, they were just playing Call of Duty or some shit, and they stumble upon this channel and they start listening to this, and you know, then maybe they try one thing, maybe they try to manifest something and it does manifest, and they're like, oh. <laughs> And then hopefully come back here. 
<laughs> and like uh, get the subscribe so then get the emotes that's the one thing is I'm really looking forward to is like it'll be really fun to have like emotes and emojis that are like funny versions of a lot of this stuff uh, like I can I can like do funny versions of a lot of the um, traditional Neville symbolism that Neville likes to talk about okay the whole manifested world Wait, let me see. If, let me make sure, because I, I might have missed that James part. Yeah, yeah, I did miss that part, and that's a good quote. If any man offend not in word, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven by fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, with so, uh, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Um, and what's cool about that quote is, it speaks to the incredulity of it. Because... To tell someone your thoughts are actually causing actions in the exterior world. You don't have to do any... Like, you just think it and the shit happens. They think, no way. No way. But as this chapter encourages, as the very beginning of the chapter said, the more you pay attention, the more you realize that that's what's been fucking happening all along. And once you really, truly recognize that, you go, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> let me <laughs> let me implement the rest of his advice here. The whole manifesto world goes to show us that show us what use we have made of the word of the inner speech. An uncritical observation of our inner talking will reveal to us the ideas from which we view the world. Inner talking mirrors our imagination, and our imagination mirrors the state with which it is fused. Okay, so. I'll, I'll explain this uh, specifically to Campbell. There is a concept that Neville talks about a lot called states. And the idea is that they're infinite states. Now, people explain and understand states in <laughs> infinite ways as well. The way I would quantify a state is maybe a little bit gratuitous, but basically, right now, everything that's Everything that's in your physical work, room around you, in your mind, your emotions, your beliefs, um, what you assume to be your past, what you assume to be your future, your body of assumptions essentially, all of that is a state. And there are infinite states and you're constantly moving through them. So the main idea that Neville is trying to communicate is in your imagination, pick a state that you want to experience. So let's say you want to experience a state of, and something simple like it's tomorrow and the gig you had in the middle of the day went well. But now you're home and you're happy it went well. So literally all you would do is visualize a scene where you're in your living room, you're sitting down, you're relaxed, and you're deeply satisfied by how well that gig went. So you would tap into the emotions of that satisfaction and then you would add some mental thoughts about it. However you would think about, yeah, that went great. I feel really good about it. Like, you know, it was off the chain. Like we, we really pulled, like we really did a great job. Whatever your your thoughts would be about that. And you know what your thoughts would be when you have a good gig versus a bad gig. So those thoughts. And you would consciously concoct and rehearse and play out this scene in your mind the night before the gig or the day but whenever but times like before sleep or when you're really relaxed are the times that Neville recommends to do those kind of visualizations but you can really do it anytime um, but that's just to give um, an example and to try to kind of explain states and how you can consciously manipulate states um, in order to experience one that if you're being lazy minded you would not get to experience is the idea there 
All right, I forgot our spot. Yeah, if the state with which we are fused is the cause of the phenomenon of our life, then we are relieved of the burden of wondering what to do, for we have no alternative but to identify ourselves with our aim, and inasmuch as the state with which we are identified mirrors itself in our inner speech, then to change the state with, we, with which we are fused, we must first change our inner talking. It is our inner conversations which make tomorrow's facts. Put off the former conversations, the old man which is corrupt, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man which is created in righteousness. Our minds, like our stomachs, are wetted by change of food. Stop all the old mechanative, uh, stop all the old mechanical negative inner talking. And start a new, positive, and constructive inner speech from premises of fulfilled desire. Inner talking is the beginning, the sowing of the seeds of future action. To determine the action, you must consciously initiate and control your inner talking. Construct a sentence which implies the fulfillment of your aim, such as, I have a large, steady, de dependable income, consistent with integrity and mutual, mutual benefit, or... I am happily married. Oh, let me make sure. It says here, get an old network error. Make sure the stream is still up. Okay, yeah, it's fine. I know I was on the, the Milgram statement. Construct a sentence which implies fulfillment of your aim, such as, I have a large, steady, dependable income consistent with mutual benefit and integrity, or, I am happily married. I am wanted. I am contributing to the good of the world. And repeat such a sentence over and over until you're inwardly affected by it. Our inner speech represents, in various ways, the world we live in. Uh, so that technique, the repeating, like one phrase or affirmation over and over, especially in a relaxed state, um, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure never, never called it a lullaby, but other people have called that a lullaby. Um, yeah, you should really be doing that when you're relaxed. And you can really focus on it and feel into it. Um, or you, when it, I mean, it's one of these things where you're going to notice. You're going to notice when, because it's happening all the time, but it seems like there are times where you're more likely to affect a quicker and a more noticeable change in the exterior world. For me, I already know that one of those times for me is doing the dishes, as much as I hate doing the dishes. Um, a bunch of times I've just had random little daydreams while I was doing the dishes, and they happened. Like within a week, two weeks, sometimes the same day. And the annoying thing is, I don't yet have a good mental control. <laughs> so sometimes they're just random things. Mostly they're just harmless things. But yeah, you're going to find the times when you're it's almost like those are the best times for you to do that now that in and of itself is an assumption because it, you are creating all the time all of your thoughts are creative um where i didn't know where i was oh in the beginning was the word <laughs> in the beginning was the word that which you sh sow ye reap see yonder fields the sesame was sesame the corn was corn the silence and the darkness knew so is a man's fate born Ends run true to origins. Those that go searching for love only make manifest their own lovelessness. And the loveless never find love, only the loving find love. And they never have to seek for it. Man attracts, let me scroll it down over here. Man attracts what he is. The art of life is to sustain the feeling of the wish fulfilled and let things come to you. Not go after them or think they flee away. Observe your inner talking and remember your aim. Do they match? Does your inner talking match what you would say audibly had you achieved your goal? The individual's inner speech and actions attract the conditions of his life. Through uncritical self-observation of your inner talking, you find where you are in the inner world. And where you are in the inner world is what you are in the outer world. You put on the new man whenever ideals and inner speech match. In this way alone can the new man be born. Inner talking matures in the dark.
From the dark, it issues into the light. The right inner speech is the speech that would be yours were you to realize your ideal. In other words, it is speech of fulfilled desire. Make sure. I am that. There are two gifts which God has bestowed upon man alone and on no other mortal creature. These two are mind and speech, and the gift of mind and speech is equivalent to that of immortality. If a man uses these two gifts rightly, he will differ in nothing from the immortals, and when he quits the body, mind and speech will be his guides, and by them he will be brought into the troop of the gods and the souls that have attained to bliss. The circumstances and conditions of life are outpictured inner talking solidified sound inner speech calls events into existence and every event is the creative sound that is it that uh let me start that again in every event is the creative sound that is its life and being all that a man believes and consents to as true reveals itself in his inner speech it is his word his life Try to notice what you are saying to yourself in this moment. To what thoughts and feelings are you consenting? They will be perfectly woven into the tapestry of life. To change your life, you must change your inner talking, for life, said Hermes, is the union of word and mind. When imagination matches your inner speech to fulfill desire, there will then be a straight, path in yourself from within out and the without will instantly reflect the within for you and you will know reality is only actualized in her talking um, I've got that one highlighted too because a lot of people want to know about faster manifestations instant manifestation and that's the answer right there um, it basically would be alignment between uh, any kind of visualization the thoughts themselves that would be in the state. Um, yeah, I mean, really just the thoughts that you would have in that state. If you could identify those and then match that to a seam, boom, that's the fastest you can possibly get to something. Now, I've had times though where that has happened, but it didn't. It still didn't happen instantly. It was still a couple hours later or whatever. And it's not totally reliable, like... But it's also because, especially when it's something you really want, you're gonna have you. There's gonna be so many thoughts you had against it already. <laughs> there's gonna be so many thoughts you had against it already, and so many limits you put on yourself. Like, once you start really thinking about the implications of all of this, and, and knowing that it works, and thinking about the implications of all of this, you realize like, oh, there is a lot of things. There's a lot of shit needs fixing. You know. Now, there is a hack for that, and I'm going to get to that in a bit. All right, where are we at here? We're at Hermes. Oh, yeah. Receive with meekness the inborn word, which is able to save your souls. Every stage of man's progress is made by conscious exercises of... of uh, every stage of man's progress is made by the conscious exercise of his imagination, matching his inner speech to his fulfilled desire. Uh, and also, especially Campbell, you'd be like, man, like this whole chapter is just him saying the same thing in different ways. And it's true. And that's all the books are, too. It's the same thing said in a million different ways. There are some nuances that are addressed because we have all these questions. There's so much shit that we forgot. We have all these stupid questions about it. And so a lot of that is addressed in the books, too. But for the most part, it's the same thing over and over, said different ways so that it will eventually sink in and you'll find the sentence that you can connect with at this moment and really uh, put to good use. Because man does not perfectly match them, the results are uncertain while they might be perfectly certain. Okay, so <laughs> Neville just echo what I just said, which is, you know, sometimes when uh, um, you get the opposite of what you want because you were double-minded about it, or, you know, you're in the state, like you've captured that state and your thoughts are coming from the state, but it still takes a while. Yeah, but that's because you spent the last two years, 10 years, <laughs> or last couple months or whatever talking against it. So all of that is still 
is still manifesting. You haven't totally moved into that new state yet. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Persistent assumption of the wish fulfilled is the means of fulfilling the intention. As we control our inner talking, matching it to our fulfilled desires, we can lay aside all of the processes. Then we simply act by clear imagination and intention. We imagine the wish fulfilled and carry on mental conversations from that premise. Through controlled inner talking from premises of fulfilled desire, seeming miracles are performed. The future becomes the present and reveals itself in our inner speech. To be held by the inner speech of fulfilled desire is to be safely anchored in life. Our lives may seem to be broken by events, but they are never broken so long as we retain the inner speech of fulfilled desire. All happiness depends on the active, voluntary use of imagination to construct and inwardly affirm that we are what we want to be. We match ourselves to our ideals by constantly remembering our aim and identifying ourselves with it. We fuse with our aims by frequently occupying the feeling of our wish fulfilled. It is the frequency, the habitual occupancy, that is the secret of success. The oftener we do it, the more natural it is. Fancy assembles. Continuous imagination fuses. It is possible to resolve every situation by the proper use of imagination. Our task is to get the right sentence, the one which implies that our desire is realized, and fire the imagination with it. All this is intimately connected with the mystery of the still small voice. Inner talking reveals the activities of imagination, activities which are causes of the circumstances of life. As a rule, man is totally unaware of his inner talking and therefore sees himself not as the cause but as the victim of circumstance. Let me make sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. I gotta scroll ahead right here. To consciously create, to consciously create circumstance, Man must consciously direct his inner speech, matching the still small voice to his fulfilled desires. He calls things not seen as though they were. Um, so the thing there is, let's say someone is depressed and there is a lot of bad stuff going on in their life. Well, they got into a habit of like really of ruminating constantly. And then they would manifest those things, be upset about them, ruminate some more, manifest some more awful stuff, and, I mean, you, you could get stuck in that your whole life and never pull out of it. Never for one second <laughs> encounter very much good because, like, you're just caught on this track and don't know, don't know that you're creating it. Like, one of the worst things you can assume and think is, is something like uh, saying you're cursed or that you're unlucky or that things just don't work out for you. There's There's one that a lot of people have. Uh, it causes just a lot of pain and misery, which is if things are going good, something bad's going to happen. Like, it's too good to be true, in short. That's an aw that's such an awful assumption. But it's like, uh, you know, people can create this really annoying pattern where it's like things will go good in their life, but they've decided that, oh, things are going too good, something bad's going to happen, and then that will cause, like, a death in their family or losing a house or, you know, some serious tragedy. And then they spend the next couple of years recovering from whatever that tragedy is. Things start going good again, and then, boom, another tragedy. And they can just play that pattern out their whole life and the whole time think that, oh, well, that's just the way life is. And the reality is that's the way they created life. That's what they chose to experience. They just, they just didn't know that they were doing it. <laughs> Those poor bastards. <laughs> so, all right, let me see where we're at. Make sure it's, it's right on the screen, too. Right inner speech is essential. It is the greatest of the arts. It is the way out of limitation into freedom. Ignorance of this art has made the world a battlefield and penitentiary, where blood and sweat alone are expected, when it should be a place of marveling and wondering. Right inner talking is the first step to becoming what you want to be. Speech is an image of mind, and mind is an image of God. On the morning of April 12, 1953, my wife was awakened by the sound of a great voice of authority speaking within her and saying, You must stop spending your thoughts, time, and money. 
everything in life must be an investment. Oh, hey, Layla, how's it going? Welcome in. Welcome in. We're just about, let's see how much we got left. I just got like two pages left of uh, the coin of heaven, which is in the book Awakened Imagination. Thank you so much for stopping in. I'm excited you're here. Um, let me start that a little bit again. Okay, in the morning, April 12, 1953, my wife was awakened by the sound of a great voice of authority speaking within her and saying, you must stop spending your thoughts, time, and money. Everything in life must be an investment. To spend is to waste, to squander, to lay out without return. To invest is to lay out for a purpose from which a profit is expected. This revelation of my wife is about the importance of the moment. It's about the transformation of the moment. What we desire does not lie in the future, but in ourselves at this very moment. At any moment in our lives, we are faced with an infinite choice. What we are and what we want to be. And what we want to be is already existent, but to realize it, we must match our inner speech and actions to it. And by the way, in that part, when he says inner speech and actions, I'm interpreting that as your mental activity, your mental action, not necessarily what you're doing in the outer world, because all of those are just emanating from whatever state you've identified with anyway, just as a clarification, especially to Campbell. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. It is only one what is done now that counts. The present moment does not recede into the past. It advances into the future to confront us, spent or invested. Thought is the coin of heaven. Thus the title of the chapter. Money is its earthly symbol. Every moment must be invested, and our inner talking reveals whether we are spending or investing. Be more interested in what you are inwardly saying now than what you have said by choosing wisely what you think and what you feel now. Anytime we feel misunderstood, misused, neglected, suspicious, afraid, we are spending our thoughts and wasting our time. Whenever we assume that the feeling of being what we want to be, we are investing. We cannot abandon the moment to negative inner talking and expect to retain command of life. Before us goes the results of all that is seemingly is behind. Not gone is the last moment, but on coming. My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Uh, and by the way, uh, pump a, skipping back just a little bit, I see I didn't, I didn't keep up on the page here. Um, this particular quote is a lot of times misunderstood by people who are new to Neville. I just want to clarify here while it's come up in a passage. Um, the two are not you and another person. The two are, in this case, in this example here, your your imagination, so your visualizations and all, and all of those and, and any kind of like hearing hearing people talk to you and stuff like that. Like whatever you're doing in terms of a scene, that has to be in sync with your daily thoughts, with your mental diet, with what you're thinking throughout the day. So if you pick the scene for the thing you want and you're doing the scene at night, your thoughts throughout the day have to match the scene. Not that they have to be from that scene, but they have to be from that reality where that thing is already accomplished. So it has to, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? There has to be a sync there. That's the thing which has to, to, to agree. The other time when Neville clarifies on what the two are is desire fulfilled and inner speech is the way he broke it down. So whatever you want, and then how would you think about it? So you have to agree within yourself the desire you have, and then your thoughts, once you have it, have to match. So I just point that out because a lot of times people think, well, if any two agree, so let's both agree that I can get this thing. No, 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 no. It's you and you that's making the agreement. You're making this agreement with yourself. You're altering your imagination and then altering your thoughts to fit to what you've imagined. 
you're making the agreement with you. I just want to point that out. <laughs> I probably didn't. I probably didn't clarify it the best because I know there's times where he clarifies it directly, but I don't know. It's just one of those things that kind of irked me. All right, it makes sense. Great, Layla. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that makes sense because it sometimes it doesn't make sense to people, and even people who have read all the books, they talk about it like it's still some little like trick you can do, and it's like no, no, no. He's 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 just explaining it metaphorically. Um, if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Um, now that earth and heaven, okay, I'm going to go to too much more. But in short, it's just aspects of your mind that have to agree. Your mind has to be in sync on this. All right, that's enough. That's enough of that. We're going to advance into the rest of this. Um, I think I'm on the circumstances of life. Yeah, which he's already said like 50 times in this chapter. The circumstances of life are the muffled utterances of the inner talking that made them, the word made visible. The word, said Hermes, is son, and the mind is the father of the word. They are not separate one from the other, for life is the union of word and mind. He willed us forth from himself. Make sure I got that up. He willed us forth from himself by the word of truth. Let us be imitators of God as dear children and use our inner speech wisely to mold them out of the world in harmony with our ideal. The Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. The mouth of God is the mind of man. Feed God only the best. Whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. The present moment is always precisely right for an investment to inwardly speak the right word. The word is very near to you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. See, I have set before you this day in before you this day life and good, death and evil, blessings and cursings. Choose life. You choose life and good and blessings by being that which you choose. Like is known to like known to like is known to like alone. Make your inner speech bless and give good reports. Man's ignorance of the future is the result of his ignorance of his inner talking. His inner talking mirrors his imagination, and his imagination is a government in which the opposition never comes into power. If the reader asks, what if the inner speech remains subjective and is unable to find an object for its love? The answer is, it will not remain subjective for the very simple reason that inner speech is always objectifying itself. What frustrates and festers and becomes the disease that afflicts humanity is man's ignorance of the art of matching inner words to fulfilled desire. Inner speech mirrors imagination, and imagination is Christ. Alter your inner speech, and your perceptual world changes. Whenever inner speech and desire are in conflict, inner speech invariably wins. Because inner speech objectifies itself, it is easy to see that if it matches desire, desire will be objectively realized. Were this not so, I would say with Blake, sooner murder an infant in its cradle than nurse unacted desires. But I know from experience the tongue setteth on fire the course of nature. Um, and at the end there, at, at the end there, um, he addresses another nuance that I see coming up a lot. Like, this is like questions that come up all the time, um, which is, and, and I talked about this example earlier. Basically, like, people want to know where is their manifestation? Why hasn't it come yet? Or why did they receive the opposite? And it's this um, it's that all throughout the day, they're not identifying with having it. Or in the case of relation, like, a lot of times I see this. And people who have relationships, they're fighting with them in their head. So why are they surprised when they end up having a fight in real life? Because you can't just do a couple affirmations at night about how y'all are in love and then all day curse them out in your head. <laughs> and think that that's not going to have an influence on your reality. Um, you have to be thinking from the premise, like in, in that example of like a feuding couple. Um, and one or one or both people want to experience having a harmony in that relationship. 
Um, even if there was a little fight that day, like say your mind got controlled, out of control and you ended up having a fight with someone, well, instead of continuing cursing them out in your head after the fight, it would be best to say, okay, well, that happened, but we're already over it. And, you know, that doesn't affect our relationship. Actually, it made our relationship stronger. Everything is fine between us. There's nothing I need to worry about. Uh, and then move back into whatever it is you default want for the relationship. We love each other so much. We get along so well. Uh, we have so much fun together. Whatever those thoughts are and whatever the sort of everyday version of those thoughts would be, uh, like whatever you do together uh, that you enjoy so much, think about those things. Don't spend another minute focusing on the fight and starting another fight in your mind. <laughs> That's the trick. That's the trick. All right, so this, uh, let me see how quickly, man, so I, I ran through that one pretty quickly. That's honestly all I had planned for the night. Let me see. Let me shift over to, other than that, I do have a rant, so. And I know Layla likes my rants. Oh, that puts me home on here. I'm trying to get my, let me just do it that way. And that should put me in to my chat. <laughs> this is my chat room, by the way. If you just joined recently, you haven't seen my chat room. This is this is the chat room. <laughs> like the virtual version and this version too. Uh, which it should when you guys um, when you guys type stuff in chat, it should show it um, on the screen. Like it'll come up over the fireplace. Let me just fix my camera right there because I readjusted it earlier. So considering that I got through that one pretty quick, I think next time doing a full lecture will be better. And I'll think of something I could have in, you know, in the middle as a buffer. Uh, like one of the things I was talking about earlier um, was doing marbles on stream. And, and if you're not familiar with marbles, it puts marbles down by whoever clicks join, like whoever types in exclamation mark join. They get a marble and then it's on this big track. And it's supposed to be a randomized race. But I think it would be fun to do those and us to manifest who wins or not, you know, <laughs> doing like little fun things like that. Okay, so my rant. And I did, I did touch on my rant earlier. And I know, I'm just talking about don't argue with people in your head. <laughs> How ironic this is. But the whole thing where people are talking shit about 2020. So at the beginning of last year, I did a, a, did a list of a bunch of scenes. Um, and I didn't loop all of them. I didn't really deeply impress a lot of them. But one I did focus on a lot was one where I was saying 2020 was the best year of my life. And not soon after the pandemic, people started talking shit about the whole year, talking poorly about an entire year. <laughs> and what happened was I knew it was emanating from my imagination. I knew that it was me. I knew that's the only reason this shit was happening. Like, that's the only reason they were saying these things is because I had focused so strongly on 2020 being a great year. So at first I revised it and I revised it every time. And sometimes it would come up two or three times in a week. And this was in like the summer when there was really no reason for people to be talking about a whole year, you know. Um, and I got to a point because I was so focused on it was happening all the time. I stopped revising it and then it started happening more where it became a joke. Where people were joking about how awful 2020 was and it all crescendoed around uh you know the new year's uh like at so many streams i visited people were just let's talk bad about a whole year <laughs> let's talk bad about a whole year and i would just like a space where we could if we're going to do that acknowledge how dumb it is to do but then preferably not do that <laughs> Because, I mean, one person that I've been watching, I'm not going to call anybody out. It's so stupid. And it's it's not someone who knows anything about manifesting as far as I know. 
uh, they were saying like, well, 2020 was a really bad year. And in addition, I think it's one that a lot of people aren't going to forget anytime soon. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, hold up. <laughs> that's, that's one of the worst assumptions. That's such an awful assumption. Like, even if it was a bad year, decided it's a bad year, when you want to forget it? Ah, so bad. Okay, uh, so we got Artsy. Hey, Artsy, how's it going? Not sure you're understanding everything, but what you're saying reverberates maybe with some analytic philosopher, Bertram Russell. Uh, so I haven't read I haven't read Russell. Um, definitely, uh, definitely, um, Parable of the Cave is would I mean would have so much uh, resonance with a lot of what Neville's talking about. Surprisingly, I don't think Neville ever uh, uses any quotes from uh, Plato. Maybe something from the Republic, but not anything from Parable of the Cave. But um, I mean, in terms of how Parable of the Cave would relate to what Neville talks about, um, you're the one. <laughs> you're the people in the cave. You're the people creating the show. You're all of it, and you're the light <laughs> in, the exter- in the exterior when you come out of it. Uh, but that sort of waking up is when you're turning around and seeing that there's figures creating that little shadow play in front of you. Uh, and then the real realization is knowing that you know, the, the shadow play was your thoughts. Um, and then the exterior world uh, was just a projection of all those thoughts. Uh, so there is some relationship there. But I haven't read Russell. So I can't, um, I can't comment on uh, if he ever touched on it. I'm trying to think of if there would be some other philosophers who... I mean, I, I know Noah was definitely uh, fond of... Um, uh, some of the tran- transcendentalists like uh, Walt Whitman and stuff like that um, because that speaks to a lot of um, the concept of Elohim uh, which is the many who are one um, the, basically the idea that God is divided into all these innumerable entities and yet it's still one uh, essential entity and the transcendentalists uh, obviously are really really focused on that really enamored with that concept um, so yeah, if anybody else has any other commentary and questions, please let me know, because we're the, just kind of just chatting part of this, uh, where I'm not sure what other little concepts, I one of the little things I want to talk about today. I mean, the 2021 was just so funny, because it's like, my year wasn't that bad. Like, it's, it wasn't even bad at all, it was a good year. Uh, <laughs> So when it kept popping up and it kept happening, it's like, it just got, oh, it just got like really tiring after a while. But it's like, there's no way I'm going to cement as a fact of my life that 2020 was an awful year. Like, why would I want to do that? Like, why would I want to condemn a whole year to awfulness? It's just, it's just silly. It's just so ridiculously silly. Um... Relate, but you know what? It did create kind of a fear in me of like, well, like if I if reality is gonna troll me that hard like that, <laughs> like what do I really want to say about twenty twenty one? You know, <laughs> like how much, how deeply can I revise that experience, uh, that twenty twenty, that twenty twenty thing, and I really do I want to want to bother? Because at the end of the day, it's like, well, I'd rather just make assumptions about specific things I want and scenes around specific things I want to happen and focus on those. Like the concept of a year, a whole year, being good or bad is not necessarily an assumption um, that I want to spend too much time on or too much mental effort on. Like just personally, it just doesn't really matter to me. But it is one of those ways that if, if that is something that you connect with, as a way to think about and frame your life, start thinking and believing and really feeling into how great of a year 2021 is or how great of a decade the 20s are. Um, if, if you have that concept of, t- of time. Uh, yeah, I don't know who that is, the Morlot Ponty, but I will definitely check them out. Uh, and related to the shadow play, so here's a fun fact. And Artsy, I don't know any of your interests, but... Most people like the Twilight Zone, right? 
So what, one of the uh, possibly Rod Serling, I don't know if they ever confirmed for sure that he went to Neville's lectures, but at least one of the writers on staff did, and it's reflected in a lot of the Twilight Zone episodes. In particular, there is an episode called Shadow Play, and Neville even uses a lot of the phrase um, shadow play. It, it, he, it's the shadow aspect of it, talking about how the world is just your projection, your shadow play. He uses that exact phrase in lectures and in some of the books. And uh, that episode has been a year since I watched it, but it did. It was definitely a darker version of this information where, like, basically the person was stuck in a dream. Um, and they were living out being a prisoner or being accused of a crime they didn't commit over and over and they couldn't escape the dream. And and similarly, our world, our experience of reality is also a dream. Um, that, that separation between the waking life and the dream world, that liminal space is like so thin. <laughs> and But what I'm really meaning to say there is our, our reality, like our waking life, is just as much a dream as our dreams. Um, it's all dream. <laughs> like it really is. So how was 2020 a great awakening for you? I gotta say this year, 2019 is the year when I had a lot more awakening and waking up type, type experiences. Um, 2020 was kind of just one long day for me. But it wasn't a bad day. <laughs> like, it was a pretty good day. Like, it was in no way the worst ever. It was pretty decent. It's like, it's totally okay. It wasn't the greatest year of my life, like I had said it in that scene or whatever. But it was good. It wasn't bad. I'm not going to talk bad about the year. You know, it was a good year. Um, and there's another thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, there was a hack I wanted to give. Oh, sees this as nodes in a spatial web. I'm definitely going to have to look that up. I'm definitely going to have to look that up. Yeah, that sounds like a really cool concept. Um, Campbell, he addressed that in the chapter we just read. I'm, I don't want to hunt too long for it, but I think that quote at the end where he talks about objective and subjective... What if the inner speech remains subjective and is unable to find an object for its love? So that juxtaposition between subjective and objective. So you could say, I mean, it would be help me if you could give me an example of an abstract thing you're thinking of manifesting. But in general, like you could focus on the feeling of love and end up manifesting a lot of things that their specific experiences, and you identify those as love. So they're fo they're presenting themselves to you because you focused on general love. You didn't focus on a specific expression of love, but that's how it came to you. So uh, that's one thing that I've experienced and used a lot of times. Uh, I'm pretty sure Joseph Murphy calls it the absolutist method. So you would like you you would pick something that you and he his suggestion was to pick something you identify as divine as being like pure divinity like one of the most noblest aspects of god uh so you you would pick something like love or freedom or abundance or joy and you would just focus on that you would just sit down and focus on joy and lose yourself in the feeling of absolute divine joy and then see what comes from that? Like what experiences in your life start um, happening uh, to represent that joy? A tonal center. Do you mean like 440 hertz or... <laughs> what do you mean by that? Because I mean, here's the other, here's the wild thing. And there's... Um, I'm pretty sure in Prayer of the Art of Believing, he goes in, he, there's, he specifically talks about it. In this chapter, he did just kind of talk about it too. Like, the concept is that all of the electromagnetism out there is projected from within here anyway. Like, there is no external world. It's all your projection. Now, the mystery of Elohim is, 
how how am I who uh, who and what am I in relationship to you and maybe this guy Ponty has a better answer for that uh, because Neville just kind of talks around it and and just is like read the Bible <laughs> and just says you know there are some uh, lay especially later lectures where he has some really cool Bible sites that um, really connect uh, to the emotional aspect of being one entity. But the intellectualization of it is something that maybe our minds aren't really designed to grasp. A drone or a root. So you do you mean like a tone? Do you mean like a tone that just doesn't stop or something like that? Because, I mean, people have manifested that using instruments. You can go to your piano right now and manifest an unending note of any type you'd like, right? We'll see what else you have to say about that. <laughs> I mean, I think I answered the, the abstract one. Um, I mean, there's a lot of forms of uh, sound, shapes, Color itself is a really interesting abstraction uh, that you can use to create very specific things. Um, there's a lot of things that are completely abstract. It's almost even it's almost impossible to even put specifics onto them, and yet it all came out of a person's imagination. It, it all was something that they decided to do, um, like. I don't know, I hope I kind of addressed that well enough, but that absolutist method that I just talked about, try that. Try that, and oh, I got to do the exercise for the day. That's right, I got to give you all the exercise. Um, so we could do that as one of the exercises. We'll have two exercises. So exercise one is the absolutist method. So pick one overall feeling uh, state that you identify as being really lofty, really great, really something amazing, uh, some, something like freedom, uh, joy, love. Pick one of those. Pick any of those. Get in a relaxed, meditative state, and you can repeat the word. Uh, you can think of things that make you identify with that. So like joy, you might think of really joyous memories. Uh, you might think of certain faces or sounds that give you joy. Um, freedom, you might think of activities that make you feel free, uh, whatever those are, like maybe riding, riding your bike or uh, like having a lot of money come in or whatever you affiliate with that sense of freedom. Sometimes just taking a walk can feel so freeing and sink into that feeling of that one particular thing and just chill out there, have fun there for a good 10 or 15 minutes. And then I guarantee it with me, it always worked that day something would happen that totally mimicked those feelings and represented those feelings perfectly later in the day. Honestly, I need to do the absolutist method way, way more. Yeah, I, I well, I'm definitely, I'm going to keep, I have to chat up and I will look up those two people after uh, because I'm definitely interested in the people who had the visions. And I think uh, Neville was really interested in William Blake because Blake had visions. Um, I was thinking earlier about, because Jerusalem is so big, I don't know if I'm ever going to read it in my lifetime unless I have some motivation, like some external pressure to do it. And maybe doing some of Jerusalem on here might be something we try to do. But the the symbolism in it is so dense, I don't know how good of an idea, idea that is. If anyone's interested, we will at some point... Uh, I will definitely have like little Blake poetry corners while we'll read some Blake because uh, Neville was really, really entranced with Blake. And hell, I was too, but I just, uh, I only I only knew he was a painter for the longest time. I had no idea uh, that he wrote these epic poems and that he wrote really, really amazing shorter poems. Uh, so we'll do some uh, Blake poetry corner at some point on here too. Okay, so your first exercise, the absolutist method. Second exercise. Given the topic of today's 
of the coin of heaven, of ordering your conversations the right, of letting go of your negative inner talking and putting on more positive inner talking from uh, the state of already having what you want. Let's do that. And let's do that with just one thing. Tomorrow, I want you to pay attention to your thoughts. Identify one shitty thought that you know to be a thought you have often. Something that you think quite a lot. You, you, maybe you haven't thought it for years, but you've thought it for the last couple of weeks. And it's definitely created in your world. Whether you believe me or not, I'm telling you it is. <laughs> Identify one such thought that's a repetitive negative thought. Decide on what you would prefer to be the case. And just have one replacement thought. One good version of that shitty thought you're having. And every time the shitty thought comes out, know and immediately move into replace it. Think the better thought that you've decided for yourself. And just keep doing it. <laughs> keep doing it until that good thought ends up uh, manifesting your exterior world. I earlier today identify... I, I mean, the, the whole point of this chapter is that you're gonna, you want to do that with all your thoughts, ideally, you know. And that gets easier the more you pick really good scenes. Like, when you pick a really good scene, your thoughts are automatically going to switch to be identified with that scene. Or you'll stop thinking about the thing less. Like, there can definitely be automatic alignment of your thoughts by using scenes to impress, but... The whole point of that chapter is to switch your thoughts over. So one of the thoughts, good artsy, try it. Try it. And if you enjoyed my little ramblings today, uh, check in next time I, uh, you see me live on here. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to check out uh, the two people you recommended today and see if Russell ever really talked about these kind of things. Because I've only seen, like, he, he, he died, like, in the 80s, right? So I think I've seen interviews with him, but never really read a lot of his stuff. Um, okay, so the thought I identified today that was garbage was um, I impressed a bunch of uh, assumptions about body and none of them worked. <laughs> and I got the opposite. Well, that's a crappy thought, and I'm blocking my own good. The thought instead should be I impressed a lot of great assumptions about my body, and they worked. They all worked perfectly. I have the body I want. Like, it's it's freaking amazing i have the body I always wanted i'm so proud of my body it worked perfectly but i realized today that i have been having i have been letting that thought stay on a loop for the whole year since i impressed all the things i let that thought stay on the loop <laughs> it's, it's easy it is so easy <laughs> to not catch these things if you're not paying attention being aware okay so next time is going to be and it's like i'm making myself do it at this point so i'm guaranteeing the next time will be this wednesday uh 4 p.m central standard time so is at 5 p.m eastern um I'll do one of the other mental diet um either do one of the other mental diet lectures or uh 12 apostles which is where Neville breaks down the symbolism of the different apostles. Um, might have time to do both. Uh, and then I'll set up, uh, I don't know if we're going to have enough people for Marbles on stream, because I want to have like at least 10 people who are willing to do it to start trying it out. But I'll find some other little amusement type thing, little game that I could put on the stream then. Um, and I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say today. I don't think so. I don't think so. And you can expect another one of these good rants. All right, your two exercises to keep in mind. Try the absolutist method and replace one bad thought. Just one. Like, it, you don't have to replace all your bad thoughts. <laughs> You're allowed to have a couple bad thoughts. Just find that one and replace that one. And then once you do that, you're going to see, like, man, I need to do this with a lot of these thoughts. <laughs> I really need to invest, invest the coin of heaven a little bit more wisely here. All right, so, and if anybody wants to check this out again, Wednesday, 4 p.m., Central Standard Time. Uh, I'll be on. I'll be doing more of this. To close it out, there's a little video I made uh, using um, selection from one of Neville's lectures called Walk on the Water. It has super melodramatic music. 
in the background. If you don't feel inspired by this video, you're dead inside. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, see you next time.